Hey guys, welcome to a quick video. Uh, a few weeks back, I showed you these, um, well, let me show you, these new type of LED pixels. And as I mentioned then, I ordered a bunch more. Well, they came in and, uh, well, as you can see, my whole disc is uh, basically filled with them. And I thought before putting them in the tree, Let's do a quick test in regards to voltage and injection stuff you need to do. Now I did all these tests earlier, I just want to show you. So, to start with an overview of the complete setup, first I'm uh, measuring uh, input power just, you know, for uh, science. And currently with the controller on but the LEDs off, we're measuring about 4.5 watts of idle power. The power supply is a uh, kind of generic Chinese 5 volt 40 watt, so 8 amps brick, and that is connected to a Quinn LED Dig Uno using this 18 gauge wire. And well, the Dig Uno is running with an ESP32 in this case, but it doesn't really matter for this purpose. The ESP8266 or the ESP32 is both fine. Uh, I have a 10 amp fuse in there, so if anything goes wrong, that fuse should blow. And then I have it connected using some uh, two and a half square millimeter cable. That's I believe 10 gauge. So pretty hefty cable to these connection blocks. Now I do this because we're going to need to inject voltage down the line. And there's only one uh, plus and one minus terminal on the Quinn LED Dig Uno. So we're going to use these blocks to splice in more power down the line. Now looking at the setup further, we have uh, well, this is uh, one string and then two strings and then the third string hooked up and then it goes into the couple blocks again. Now to do that, I use some extra sets of these, uh, these wires and G's JST connectors you often get with your LED strips. So basically I just connect that to the end of the LED strip. I connect it into three couple blocks, one for minus, one for plus and one for data. And data is basically relinked immediately to an, the other end, linking to the rest of the strips. And then power is also relinked, but there is an extra, because it's a three prong uh, connection block, an extra socket where I splice in another 18 gauge power wire. I use a nice wire ferrules and stuff like that. And well, then it continues. It Another string, another string, another string. And then we end up basically at the same deal. Uh, these LEDs are actually malfunctioning right now because there isn't enough power to actually uh, correctly control the data or the, the LED itself, the chip inside the LED. So here again, we have a connection block for the minus, for plus, and uh, hooking up data or linking it through. And then at the end of that strip, there is another single strand because I have seven strands so basically, I will be injecting power at the beginning, at the middle, and then at the end, but at the end, I'll have a, nut, a single string after that, because, well, uh, as you'll see, four strings between two injection points was too much, but because these LEDs use less power than the generic pixels uh, you see most often, you can hook up three strings and not have to power each two strings or 100 pixels like you often have to. So what happens if I turn it on without injecting any power except at the front? Well, let's see. Let's uh, turn on WLED and it's set to medium brightness kind of at the orange, which is the default starting color. And starting off, it looks okay. And then we go further to the left and it starts from going from orange to kind of red to more red, to blinking, to not actually being lit up at all. Well, maybe a tiny little bit, but that's not the right brightness. And if we take a multimeter, let's uh, see if I can do that with a single hand. Uh, probably not. Hold on, only, there we go. And we see that at the end of the, or at the ejection point after the sixth string and before the seventh string, but not injecting power, we're getting 1.69 volts. Yeah, that's not high enough because 
Each pixel will retransmit the data to the next pixel, but it will do so with the voltage it's currently running at. So you know the, how you can use a sacrificial pixel instead of a level shifter, my Quinn LED Dig Uno uses. You can boost the voltage from 3.3 volts to 5 volt the pixel expects, but you can only do that if 5 volt is actually getting to the pixel. If that pixel is running at 4, maybe 3 or even 2 volt, the data signal it forwards will also be at that amount. Now, let me turn up the power while, or turn up the brightness basically while you're looking at it. And the funny thing is, you see that this is raising power and lowering it again. When I lower power, more LEDs light. And when I raise power, they turn off again because there's just not enough power in these wires to feed all the LEDs. So let me hook up the first injection point and I have the wires prepared to the terminal blocks or the connection blocks I have at the beginning with the thick wires coming from the Quinn LED Dig Uno. And then I'll show you what kind of difference that makes. Okay, so the only thing changed is that I took the wires that I already had prepared here that I spliced in using these connector blocks. It's not pretty, but it works for some reason. I wish they would make uh, T connectors for JST cables. I don't understand why they don't do that. I have an upcoming project which is outside, which is using X connect cables and more videos about that in the future, but those have T connectors so you can easily splice in power. But for JST, I haven't been able to find it and I thought about making them myself, but in the end I got lazy and I just used these connection blocks. As always, I'll have everything used and seen in this video linked in the description if you want to build it yourself, or lots of information is available on quinled.info. So, as I mentioned, uh, the only thing I did was connect that cable to here, so the power now has a path all the way through the LEDs to here, but it's also being fed using this path. And basically, uh, as I've heard someone else say, Power flows like water, it'll go the way of the least resistance. So basically, this will even each itself out until, well, everything is basically evenly balanced automatically. And if we continue from there, we are still not power injecting at the end. We see that more power is getting there, but it's still not enough. As you can see, this is still orange because that's connected to these blocks here, so that it has power pretty close. But then the second string already is starting to, the, the color is starting to fade a little bit. Here it turned red, and this is just blinking because it doesn't know what to do. So let me hook up the second power injection point I have over here. And, uh, oh wait, we can do the, uh, the measurement again to see how much power we're getting now. 1.94. So that's a bit higher, but nowhere near enough. Let me splice in that other line and uh, add it to these blocks and see what happens. Okay, looking back at those blocks in the beginning, we see there is now two power wires spliced in to after three strips or uh, LED strings, I guess. And then here after another three LED strings using the same method. And then there's one string just behind uh, that injection point because, well, you can survive one string without having to inject power both ways. And as you can now see, everything has turned the correct color yellow. And even if we go into WLED and let's raise power to the maximum, everything stays the same color. But this is just the, the yellow-orange starting color so let's do the ultimate test, and that would be, well, sending it to basically white. And as we can see, that gives off a lot of light, and everything looks pretty much the same color of white. Except, for instance, uh, I'm not sure that will show up on video, but this one here, it looks a little bit off-white compared to the ones that are directly next to an injection point. So this is basically one, two, three. So the middle one is a little bit uh, less bright and decolored, but it's not that bad. Looking at our power draw, we're now at about 32 watts. So subtracting the four watt we had of idle power, that means these seven strings use about 28 watts maximum. 
So I'd say around six amps should be enough. And well, this is full RGB white. So basically the most horrible scenario you can uh, throw at them. And I'll say that if you don't intend to, to run them at full white all the time, injecting every three wire or three strings, that's enough. Because if we uh, take an uh, effect like this, for instance, we have the yellow and then hold on until it gets here. I have this uh, white, pure white going through it. And it makes for a very nice, uh, nice effect. And I'm really interested to see how that looks in the Christmas tree. But if we look at the power meter, we see we're only using 10.7, 10.8 watts. So the full RGB white is really torture test. And if it survives that, it'll basically survive any effect you can, uh, can really throw at it. This is some, uh, I don't know, pink and blue. That's alternating a little bit. And that looks fine. Brightness is all even. And while well, that uses about 12 watts, let me look up another effect for you guys. Okay, we're in the dark now, so you can see the brightness a little bit better. Uh, this is basically on the party palette and doing noise too, I believe. So there's lots of stuff going on and all kinds of colors and twinkles and I don't know what. But looking at the power, we're seeing about 9.7, 9.6 watts. So the effect you use really makes a difference in regard to power usage. Let me uh, turn on the lights again. And well, if you can make sure that full white basically gets enough power by measuring injection points and measuring voltage, uh, I measured at some points, but it's a bit hard to demonstrate on video using the JST connectors. And with these splice points, so having uh, three strings between each point, it drops below three volt, but only like 2.93, 3.1 with full RGB white. But as I said, you'll basically never be running that. And with certain most effects, it stays around 4.2, 4.5 volts. And that's a good indication that your power and power injection is in order. Um, next videos you'll see about this is when these will be up all up in the Christmas tree and stuff like that. And of course, I'll be using WLED, so I'll be using WLED effects. But I also want to look into X lights and maybe uh, mapping the tree to uh, make patterns that, you know, go up and down or left and right and stuff like that run over the tree. So as I mentioned, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Um, I also have a Discord channel you can join to ask all kinds of questions. If you're looking for a digital LED controller, maybe look into my Quinn LED Dig Uno that's also controlling all this setup and WLED runs on it perfectly. Uh, it has a fuse and stuff like that uh, for more protection, 5 volt, 12 volt, compatible, and all kinds of good stuff driving LEDs. Okay guys, thanks for watching and catch you in the next one. Bye bye.